Hi everyone, in this tutorial I will explain the smart weathering preset system that we introduced in the 3.0 version. It is meant for using smart weathering configurations across different Blender projects or even share them with anyone. We can start by doing an overview. Let's suppose that you have this smart weathering configuration and you want to save it to later reuse it. I will click on Mid, Warn, write Tutorial 01 in the last custom field and click on Save. Once you do that, the preset gets created. If I want to apply it, I remove the current smart weathering and click on Apply to Active. This will be the very basic concept of the presets. Now I will explain more details about it. So the first thing to do to properly use them is to ensure that the preset directory is correctly set up. For that, I will go to Edit, Preferences, search for the Smart Weathering add-on in the search bar, and check that the Smart Weathering directory is correctly set up. Once you do that, you have set up the place where all the presets will be saved. Now we can start with the process again, but this time I will explain it with more details. Once again, let's say that you created an effect such as this one and you want to save it. You will have to generate a name on the Save and Filter section. This section has pre-generated words that will help you keep your presets organized using a naming convention and most importantly, the preset will have tags that will be useful to filter them and find the one that you want to apply. As you can see, there isn't a generated name yet, but once you start clicking on them, it will start generating a name for you, and also it will start working as a filter on the Apply Gallery of Presets. You also have some custom fields that will allow you to add your own words to the name chain in these positions. For example, I will add start here, end here, and my custom name 01 at the end. Be careful with these because they will be considered when filtering, so it is advised to keep them blank when you are done creating the preset. It is also suggested that you prevent creating long names. This is mainly because operative systems have file path names character amount limitations, so instead of naming your presets with many tags, try to just use a few. This concept also applies for the custom fields. They shouldn't be that long. In this case, I will describe this preset as mid, warm. I will add tutorial 01 in the last custom field. And before saving it, I can choose whether the shader ball color preview will be white or black. In this case, I will choose white and I will click on save. Now the Smart Weathering preset has been created after doing a render process that will generate the image you will see in the gallery below. Once you have done that, you can click on Update to update the gallery and you will be able to search your preset on the list of presets that you may have. That is why we created this filter system. As we saw, when you start using the buttons and fields, it will start filtering the presets. This filter system has two modes that will be determined whether this checkbox is enabled or disabled. When disabled, the filter will act in an additive way. It will show all the presets that contain at least one of the selected tags or custom field words. When restrictive mode is enabled, it will only show the preset that contains exactly the same selected tags. Both of them can be useful in different scenarios. Now I will proceed to the second part, which is applying the presets. You simply have to have your object selected. And once you have your preset selected on the Apply Gallery, like this one, you simply click on Apply Preset to the Active or to the Selection. In this case, I will click the Active button and it immediately applies the preset to the active material of the active object. The Selection button will apply the preset to all the materials of all the selected objects in your scene. 
A few things that might be good to consider are that the presets themselves are only two files per preset that will be saved on the folder you have set up before. You can see right here that we have all of the shown presets in the gallery and each preset has its corresponding JSON file and image thumbnail. Be careful and try not to change their names or if you do so, Keep in mind that you should build the name under the same naming convention that is automatically generated and that both files should have the same name despite having different extensions. Just for the ones who want to know a little more about the JSON, you can open it with any text editor and you will see all the saved sliders and name values. And if you are more advanced, you can manually change them. Now, stepping aside from the technical aspect, it is worth mentioning that these presets can be shared with anybody. In case you want to share them, you can collect all these files and send them. If someone sent them to you, you just select all of the ones that has been sent, drag and drop them into the presets folder, and once you update the gallery, they will appear there. I will rename these files to show you that you can do that as long as you respect the naming convention. In this case, I will change the version of this preset name. It will appear in the gallery and you can still use it. Now I changed the version on purpose to also show that it will check for the preset version. And if it detects that it is from another version, it will inform it to you as a warning. This is because the apply mechanism will search for the saved slider name and if it finds a matching slider in the smart weathering setup, it will apply the saved value. So if in a future version we change the name or remove that particular slider, that saved information will not be applied. Also, keep in mind that we may change some of the slider's behavior, for instance, the scale minimum and maximum values, so the saved information will produce a different output in the newer version. In this case, you can try to use it, and if you see changes, you simply readjust it and save it again for the new version. Now, another function we have in the preset section is that you can delete the selected preset with this X button. Just a few things to also keep in mind are that you can add the preset even if the material doesn't have smart weathering on it. And that you can apply the preset using the apply color information option. This way, the color saved on the preset will also be applied. So well, that should be it for this tutorial. We hope you find it useful. Saludos.